tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Satnam everyone. Today I'm very excited because metaphysics is an expanding field here in the Philippines. There are so many modalities that are booming. In the Philippines, people are growing interest in meditation, yoga, life coaching, and many other things that are related to this field. And I know I have a lot of friends as well who are already practitioners themselves. So hello to everyone. And today I'm so excited because I have my colleague, Tina Brinkley Potts, who's an award-winning author, business strategist, online marketing trainer, success coach, and certified key partner of coaches and consultants, experts, and actually even small business owners from over 70 countries watch and apply her training videos and her strategies so they can grow their business and you know their expert career status and status in their field and her expertise include creating client attraction systems that integrate your desired lifestyle and personality to hone and market your storehouse of knowledge education and experience so you can chart your own unique path and create a dollar amount that you desire her accomplishments include being a mom of three, a grandmother of five, and she's also a 2018 Woman of the Year for Delaware. And she's also a Top Gun Consultant Award winner, 2018 Strategist of the Year, 2020 Rookie of the Year in Keep. And at the same time, she has helped more than 75 authors become number one bestsellers. So without further ado, let's welcome our guest, Tina Brinkley Potts. Satnam Tina. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to have this uh, uh, episode because so many of our colleagues are actually asking what's the best systematic way to grow your business, especially now there are so many people who are growing interest in life coaching and energy eating. But before we go along, I was wondering what got you into metaphysics? Uh, an illness. So I was diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis. And um, the journey through all of that, going to you know one of the best hospitals in the country, John Hopkins, and being told that I had a an operable brain tumor, you know, like I had so many different diagnoses. And at that point in time, um, I just knew something had to be different. Like there was just no way um, that I was going to uh, succumb to that disease. And um, I came across the book, You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. Mm -hmm. um, and I started applying the principles there and since then have slowly gone on a journey of discovering more and more ways to apply metaphysics in my life. That's fantastic. I'm so happy that you're actually freely sharing about your health condition because I know so many people are actually concerned about health right now. So thank you for trusting us enough about sh sharing that aspect of your life and I'm very sure that a lot of people are listening and they can actually relate to this and here in the Philippines although there are some people who are interested about the book you can heal your life <laughs> uh, there's still a big number of skeptics where they're not aware about the integration of the mind body spirit so can you please tell us more about your personal experience about your journey of transforming that health limitation into your journey of overcoming it and how that book actually helped you you know transform your condition well um first and foremost i want to say metaphysic um universal principles work whether you believe them or not so you, if you just take one small aspect of your life and you start applying it, you can see results within 24 hours of knowing, okay, wait a minute, something did change here. So for me, um, when I started 
consciously and deliberately applying my mind to different things, I could see that it worked. But the, the thing that I would tell someone who is skeptical, try it on something small that doesn't matter. Like, you know, today, just say, you know, I'm going to see an orange car. I'm going to see orange cars. I'm going to see orange cars. Now, if you don't normally see orange cars and then all of a sudden you start seeing orange cars, then you will know that because I kept saying orange cars, orange cars, orange cars, while you were watching this, that I started activating something in you and now you're seeing a whole bunch of orange cards. It is just that simple. You can start small. It doesn't need to mean anything in order for you to begin to apply these things in your life. Yeah, thank you so much, Dina, for sharing it. And I know for both of us, because we're both from the University of Metaphysics, mm -hmm. it's so easy for us to understand what it is. But personally for you, in your own simple terms, what is metaphysics in such a way that our audience can digest what it is? Well, you know, the most famous universal principle is the uh, law of attraction. Mm -hmm. you, know, what, you know, whatever you think about grows. It's a little bit more than that. It's actually whatever you feel grows. Um, but that's the most simple. Um, the best way for me to explain it is everything in this world was created at least twice once in your mind and once on the physical and so if you just think of it that way um that when you're thinking something in your mind that is the seed when you feel it you're giving it gas right you're watering it and then there will be the plant, which is the manifestation. So if you just begin to think of those two things, whatever, I, whatever I'm thinking is the seed, and then how I feel is the water, the fertilizer, all of that goodness. And then from all of that, I'm going to create a plant. That's the easiest way to think of metaphysics. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tina, for sharing it. And I like that simple analogy. I'm sure I, I love the, the mention of books, Dr. Catherine Ponder, Florence Coville Shin, because those are some of the books that we would like to share to our viewers. If you can look for them, we highly encourage you to read them. You're going to get a lot of benefit on how you're actually going to deal with different areas of your life and how you can actually be empowered in the face of limitations. Because I know with Tina's inspiring story about transforming her health condition to uh, her health now and the level of her thriving business. And she's helped a lot of book authors get their books onto the bestsellers list. She has so much to share to all of us. So Nadine, if you have other questions, you can actually send them. So anyway, Tina, aside from the thing that we mentioned, you know, we talked about metaphysics as a very good foundation for, you know, living one's life and dealing with one's life, whatever circumstances there may be. And we know that it can help a lot of people, actually. And one of the things that I'm excited about tonight's interview is combining metaphysics with another topic that I'm very much interested in, which is marketing. So, uh, first of all, Tina, what do you is marketing because a digital marketer friend of mine uh, used to emphasize this to us marketing is all about education you just can't expect people to buy your product without them getting properly educated about the service or product that you have so what can you uh say about it Tina? so i think uh my favorite way of describing marketing is simply awareness and relationships I need to make you aware and develop a relationship with you. So um, if you're a brand, the brand wants to develop relationships with their audience and then eventually start dating. <laughs> right? That, yeah. You start dating and, 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 and then you seal the deal, right? You seal the deal and, and, and they become a customer. That's really what marketing is to me. And so when you think of it in terms of metaphysics, um, the, the thing is, is again, we must see the end. We vision the end 
and then we begin to apply that so i am looking at what it is that i want to project in the world that i want it to meet on an energetic level level so it can come back and so you know it's not just the words i speak but it's also the the way that i feel about it because if i i was very clear about having the show was to promote the balance of people planet and profit you know it's a content that i really want to get out there when for instance i'm a very devoted minister promoting the value of doing what one loves to do loving what one does because let's face it, it it's actually a combination there are things that we all love about our work every day but there are also portions where we feel that it's a stretch because it's not exactly the thing that gives us joy but one thing that i want to get across to our audience especially the millennials you know there are portions about work that you don't necessarily love but it makes you grow it makes you more masterful in your craft and you actually want to capitalize on that learning and, and growing your skill set and your mindset and you becoming the best at work it also provides you the capacity to create more profit for yourself become more self-sufficient and at the same time the more self-sufficient you are whatever needs the community has you have a b- very positive orientation about why you need to make money because when you have money you can actually help the community when you don't have the money you're there you're not even self-empowered for for some people and at the same time i, I get uh this question a lot you know, where people are trying to find the spiritual basis of money or the spiritual basis of having wealth and because both you and i the thing the first thing i want to say is that um even with the little things that you don't love about your business it's best to reframe it to the to the why you are doing it the love of why you're doing it and i just want to give this example i am not going to wash the dishes in my kitchen until i want to do it because i don't want to create that energetic um uh disconnect and mm-hmm. so when i go to wash the dishes in my kitchen i do it because i love having a clean kitchen i might not love washing dishes but i do it because i love having a clean kitchen and so when i'm standing there for those few short moments i am doing it out of love i'm not doing something that i don't like to do when you do when you're working and you're not balancing your emotions because remember we we talk about mind body spirit we want all of them to be aligned and you you know there is this such this misnomer of you know you're just pushing through pushing through pushing through you don't push through it's best for you to align first make sure everything is in agreement your mind your body and your spirit before you go and you would have better results so if i'm going to market today i want to be completely aligned with the marketing i'm going to send out and it's going to have much better results just because now i am a co-creative force with the god that wants to express through me I'm not I'm not aligned if I am not doing it that way. And that's where most people are having the difficulty. It's because we aren't taking we're doing so many things on the external and forgetting that the internal matters. Well, guess what? Whatever what 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 is it um whatever within so without. So that is that is really where we would want to go with this. So, <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for sharing it, Tina. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on V81 Radio, Manila.